Welcome to Hearts of New Zealand. In this series I will travel to backcountry huts all around New Zealand to record, review and rate my experiences to give you a better idea of what to expect when you go hiking around our beautiful country. Today I'm off to Sunrise Hut, a very popular and well equipped hut in the central North Island's Ruahine Ranges. Access is easy for most vehicles. From Napier, travel southwest along State Highway 50 for 45 minutes and then turn right after Tikakino onto Wakarara Road. From here, travel west for 20 minutes and then turn left onto North Block Road for another 10 minutes. This is a gravel road that ventures onto a working farm, so take care and make sure to close the gates behind you. There should be plenty of parking at the start of the track, but make sure you lock your vehicles and don't leave any valuables behind. There's a long drop style toilet here, and plenty of information for the forest park on covered signs. I would recommend taking a photo of these signs to take with you into the forest, just in case of an emergency or a change of plans. A quick hop over a fence style leads you up the start of the track, which rises through grazed farmland right up to the bush edge. Not far from here is Triple X Hut, a great base camp to the ranges with 12 bunks, a wood stove, a long drop and a large water tank. Also close by is the Swamp Track, an easy one hour loop that explores mature native forest and swamp land at the base of the ranges. Starting at an altitude of 630 metres, the Sunrise Hut Track climbs up the ridge through native beach forest rich with bird life. A series of switchbacks make the track less steep and easier to walk. The track is wide and very well defined, with some rocks, tree roots and the odd muddy patch you'll need to watch out for. About halfway up at 920 metres, another track splits off and down the hill to Waipawa Forks Hut. There is a wooden bench here, making it the perfect place to stop for a rest. Occasionally the canopy will open up and you'll get a glimpse of the views over Hawke's Bay. In the winter the upper sections of the track will become covered in snow, so some sturdy and grippy shoes would be advised. As you climb higher and higher the forest around you changes from large trees to smaller more stunted trees with more shrubs, grasses and mosses. On weekends and holidays you will meet many friendly trampers, so be sure to say hi and stop for a chat. Finally, at 1,300 metres you'll emerge from the forest onto Buttercup Hollow and be greeted by Sunrise Hut, sitting proud amongst the grasses and trees. To the left you'll see the stunning views of Hawke's Bay, stretching all the way from Hastings in the northeast to Waipawa in the southeast. You can leave your pack at the hut and take a 20 minute walk over to Armstrong Saddle which is further up the ridge. On a clear day you'll get some amazing panoramic views from the nearby mountaintops, especially of Ruapehu, Narahoe and Tongariro volcanoes to the west. Take in the views and bask in the glory of the serene alpine beauty, spectacular as the sun goes down. And as the sun drops, so does the temperature. So it's time to get back to the hut and to warm up. Sunrise Hut was originally built in 1983 by the New Zealand Forestry Service, and since then it has been renovated and added to a number of times. Today it is a fully serviced Department of Conservation hut with loads of amenities, including a wood stove suitable for cooking on, bench tops with sinks, tables and chairs, coat hooks for wet gear, storage shelves and 22 mattresses and bunks. Outside there's a large covered deck, two long drop toilets, a helipad, a woodshed with tools, warden's quarters and two large roof filled water tanks. It is advised you boil the water before using it, so bring your own gas stove. In winter the pipes often freeze, so you might have to find some fresh snow to melt for your backcountry cuisines. Overnight temperatures can drop well below freezing, but the hut will stay very cosy thanks to the wood stove, insulation and double glazing. When it gets dark in the evening you can light candles around the walls to help you see, but you'll also need a headlamp. There's almost always many other people in the hut, especially in peak season or on weekends, so the evenings are a great time to meet new people and share stories, play cards and sit around the fire. 
Other activities include reading, stargazing, or going on a late night possum hunt. When it starts to get late, remember good hut etiquette. Go to sleep at a reasonable time, keep noise down, and don't shine bright lights around the bunks. Oh, and don't forget your earplugs, because I guarantee someone else's snoring will keep you awake. Well, it's not called Sunrise Hut for nothing. Waking up early to gaze at the dawn of the new day is a must. The hut becomes a hive of activity in the morning as people pack up their gear, cook breakfast and clean the interior. Remember to take all rubbish back out with you and don't forget to sign into the hut logbook as well. It's now time to say goodbye to the new friends you've made and decide whether to continue off into the Rohini Ranges or to return to the car park. Sunrise Hut is an incredible place to hike to and to stay the night, especially when the weather is perfect. You're bound to have a great time, meet some cool people and create lasting good memories from the experience. I would rate Sunrise Hut 5 stars and I highly recommend you get up there as soon as you can if you haven't done so before. Bookings are required from the start of October to the end of April when the weather is warmest and the hut is its busiest. All other times of the year it is first in, first served. The dock website in the description below has all the information for prices and how to book. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of the huts of New Zealand.